Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all right? I'll be seeing this one. I need both my hands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my name is Lucas Champollion. I'm a semanticist. That means I... I'm a semanticist. That means I think about meanings. Today, I'd like to give you a taste of the kind of research that I do. And to make sure I don't go over time, I will also read off from the past slides, and they are on this computer here. Even though what you see is from this computer here, so let's hope that this goes all right. <laughs> so this particular piece of research starts with a logic puzzle, which involves two switches and a light. And for this research, I teamed up with Ivano Ciardelli, who's a semanticist and a logician, Ivano Ciardelli, and Lin Min Zhang, who is uh, a recent alum of our department here, um, and an experimental linguist. I'm very grateful to both of them. So here is a puzzle. Imagine that we have a light that's controlled by two switches, A and B. And the light is on whenever the two switches are in the same position, both up or both down. Otherwise, if they're in different positions, the light is off. Now imagine that things right now are like on this picture here. Both switches are up, so the current flows through the top cable and it reaches the light, so the light is on. Now I'd like to ask you to take part in a little experiment right here. This is essentially the same experiment that we ran on a few thousand people on the internet. What I'll do is the following. I'll show you various sentences about this little circuit. And what I would like you to do is tell me if you agree with these sentences. Some of them will be true, others will be false. Sometimes it might be a little bit hard to say, and that's okay. Don't think about it too hard. I just want your gut reaction. I don't care what you were learned, what you were taught at high school. I don't care what you were taught in logic classes if you took them, or what someone might have told you about the proper way to speak. There isn't necessarily a right answer for any one question. Okay? All right. So let's try with simple, a few simple sentences. Okay. So here's the first sentence. Switch A is down. Now look at the picture and raise your hand if you agree with the sentence. Okay, and now raise your hand if you don't agree. Good, all right, that was easy, right? Switch A is actually up, so the sentence is false. Okay, now let's look at another sentence. This is a second sentence. Switch A and switch B are not both down. Okay. Now, please raise your hand if you agree with this one. Okay. There are many more hands up now, this time, than for the previous one. This one is true. It's perhaps a bit roundabout. It might not be the best way to put things if you were to describe this. But it's true. What about this one? Switch A or switch B is up. If you agree with this, please raise your hand. Okay, now maybe you're thinking this isn't the best way to describe the picture, right? After all, we use the word or when we're not sure about something. Now, we can all see this picture. So maybe it's helpful to imagine somebody who doesn't see very well and they can only see one of the switches. They don't know which one it is that they can see. And then they say to us, switch A or switch B is up. And because we see the full picture, I think we would agree with them. So. This makes it clear, if you were in doubt, this makes it clear, I think, that the sentence, this, one, this sentence is also true. In any case, when we asked people online, four out of five people told us that this sentence is true. Now, the next few sentences are a little bit more complicated. The picture is still the same one as before. It shows how things actually are. Both switches are up, and the light is on. Now, what we have here is called a, a counterfactual statement. It says, if switch A and switch B were both down, then the light would be off. Now, if you agree with this, please raise your hand. This one, this one also, it, it's a little bit hard, right? So switch A, if switch A and switch B were both down, the light would be off. No, right? It wouldn't. This one is false. Here's what I think is going on in our minds when we hear a counterfactual like this. We think about alternate states of affairs. We imagine the two switches being down, 
And we think about what happens to the light in that case, like in this little picture here on the right. And we see that in that case, the current, the current would flow through the bottom cable and the light would still be on. So we say that the sentence is false. Here's another counterfactual. If switch A was down, the light would be up. Now please raise your hand if you agree with this one. Okay, so most people that we ask, and most of you, agree on this. Now the little picture here <coughs> is a relevant alternate state of affairs. The current doesn't reach the light, so the light is off. And so we agree with this sentence. Now here's a third counterfactual. If switch A or switch B was down, the light would be off. Please raise your hand if you agree. Okay. Now most people that we ask about this, most of you guys agree. And I think this sentence makes us consider two alternate states of affairs. Either we toggle switch A, or we toggle switch B. And either way, the light is off, so we agree with the sentence. And here's the last sentence I asked you about. When I do this at home, my wife gets really angry if I ask her too many of these. And I just <laughs> if switch A and switch B were not both up, the light would be off. Please raise your hand if you agree with this one. So, I see very few hands. And that's similar to what we saw in our experiment, where only one in five people agreed with this sentence. And I think this is for the following reason. We now consider three alternate states of affairs. It could be that just switch A is down, just like before, and then the light would be off. And similarly, it could be that just B is down, and the light would be off. But it could also be that both switches are down, and then the light would be on again. And for that reason, most people hesitate or disagree with the sentence. So here are the sentence again, side by side, along with what you said about them, and what we found in our online experiment. Now, what I would like to tell you is what's puzzling about this. There's actually two puzzles here. The first puzzle is about the nature of meaning. That's a rather philosophical question, isn't it? So it's appropriate for this building here, which is a philosophy department. <laughs> Remember, I asked you earlier about simpler sentences, A or B is down, and A and B are not both up. These are the simple sentences that we started out with, not the counterfactuals that I asked you about later. Each one is true in the same state of affairs, namely the ones with a check mark that you see right here. Now, if you ask semanticists and philosophers the question, what is meaning? Many of them would say that meaning is determined by what makes sentences true or false. They would also say that when two sentences are true in the same state of affairs, they have the same meaning. In any case, that's what we teach our students. <laughs> For example, the sentences John kicked the ball and the ball was kicked by John have the same meaning because they are true in the same state of affairs. Now, the two short sentences we have just seen are part of the longer counterfactual sentences, the third and the fourth longer counterfactual sentences. And I have underlined the short sentences. Now, remember, we agreed with sentence three, but we disagreed with sentence four. So, these counterfactual sentences aren't true in the same state of affairs. They can't have the same meaning. Now, the meaning of longer sentences depends on the meaning of the shorter sentences that they contain. But then, the two short sentences, the ones that I underlined, can't have the same meaning either. Even though they are true in the same state of affairs as we just saw. So, there must be something more to the meaning of a sentence than the state of affairs in which it is true or false. But what is that extra ingredient? In other words, what is meaning? That's the first puzzle. <laughs> and here's the second puzzle. Now, many linguists believe that to check if a counterfactual is true, we imagine making changes to the actual state, the actual state of affairs, to reality, but we avoid making gratuitous changes. For example, suppose I have a pen, and imagine, consider the following counterfactual. If I dropped this pen, it would fall. 
Now that seems true. The change that we imagine making consists in dropping the pen. We don't consider what would happen, let's say, if I drop this pen and I also change my location to outer space, in which case there's no gravity. That would seem like a gratuitous change. <laughs> now, the dashed line corresponds to the boundary between those alternate states of affairs that we're willing to consider and the rest. I'm drawing a glowing red arrow for a gratuitous change, that is a change that takes us outside this boundary. Now think again about the first sentence. If switch A was down, the light would be off. We agree to this, even though toggling both switches at once would lead to the light being on. And it seems that the reason we agree with this sentence is that toggling switch B as well would be a gratuitous change as on the image on the left. But then what about sentence four? If switch A and switch B were not both up, the light would be off. Why is that sentence not true? We disagree with it because it might be that both switches have been toggled at the same time. For this sentence, it seems that toggling A and B together is not gratuitous after all, as in the image on the right. Many semanticists believe that what counts as gratuitous shouldn't differ from one sentence to the next. But what our sentences show is that that can't be right. So what determines what counts as gratuitous for any given sentence? That's the second puzzle. Now I hope that this has given you a taste. I hope this has given you a taste of semantic research. If you'd like to read more on this, we published a paper on our results. We made it open access, so anyone can download it for free. You have the reference here and the link to it. And if you have suggestions for solutions to these puzzles, if a little light bulb went went off in your head, then I hope you'll stick around for the reception after these talks across the street, and you'll get hold of me then. And I'm eager to hear from you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.